Welcome back. With the Edo State governorship election coming closer, the frequent violent occurrences in the state has called to question the safety of carrying out the elections come September 19th. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, recently went back on its threat to stop the conduct of the election, noting that a postponement will lead to a constitutional crisis. However, some days later, God, uh, Governor Godwin Obasaki has accused the former national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Sushomole, of sponsoring attacks against him. From all indications, we can safely say that the decision of INEC is right. Maybe. Joining us to discuss this is uh, Festus Okoye, INEC National Commissioner and Information Voter um, Education Committee Chairman, Vazum, and of course, uh, we also have Emmanuel Ojuko, former Police Commissioner. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm going to start with um, Festus Okoye. Um, Edo State hasn't been known to be such a volatile state with regards to elections. Um, it's hard to imagine what could be different now. Can you, can you help you know, explain what might have changed? Uh, honestly, I don't know what, uh, what, what, ha what has changed. Uh, the business of the commission is to organize, undertake, and supervise elections. And that's what we know how to do. And that's exactly what we are going to do uh, in relation to the Edo governorship election. Uh, having said that, I want to also say that uh, the commission is not oblivious of the level of uh, threat and the level of violence that has attended the uh, political campaigns and political rallies so far. And we are documenting all those threats. We are documenting all the allegations. And uh, the ones we, uh, uh, that are actionable, we are going to hand over to the Nigerian police force uh, for them to conduct um, additional, inv additional investigations. But we have made it very clear to the political parties. We have made it very clear to the candidates um, and all the other political actors in Edo State that um, it is in their own interest uh, to conduct their political campaigns and political rallies in a manner that befits uh, a state that is going into democratic elections. Uh, you cannot go into an election uh, uh, with, the, with, with the level of threats we have seen and with the level of violence uh, that, that, that uh, we are witnessing. Uh, this is because the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, will deploy not less than 20,974 uh, ad hoc staff uh, to go and uh, conduct this particular election. And out of this uh, around 20,000, over uh, uh, 15,000 are going to be uh, 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 young men and women uh, doing their national youth service. And the rest may likely be, be drawn from uh, federal, federal tertiary institutions and, um, and other parastatals. And so we will not superintend an election where the blood of some of these young men and women will be spilled. Uh, so we are appealing to the political parties uh, to pull back from this level of threat and this level of violence that we are witnessing to enable us conduct election. I, I want to know you, fair and transparent. Yeah, and apologies. This, you spoke about threats. I want to know where these threats have been coming from. Well, we, 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 the, as far as we are concerned, the, we uh, cleared uh, 14 political parties to conduct, uh, to contest the Edo governorship election. And we, most of them are conducting their political campaigns and conducting their rallies as of today. Uh, so we have um, uh, uh, our electoral institute and we have our voter education and publicity department yeah. that are compiling incidents of uh, threat and incidents of violence that have attended the election so far. Uh, so um, uh, it's, it's, it's not right to begin to segregate at, at this particular moment where these uh, incidents are coming from or where these threats are coming from. At that proper time, we will make available the evidence at our disposal uh, to the appropriate authorities and demand that the ones that are actionable, uh, they should take action on them. Well, hopefully it wouldn't, it wouldn't be too late at that time. I'm gonna bring in uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ojuku uh, now. Uh, former com uh, police commissioner, um, I'm sure that you've also found yourself, you know, in these, you know, in, in, in this type of environment before, close to mm -hmm. elections. And of course, you've had to play a role to ensure that uh, lives are secured and, you know, lives and property are also, you know, safe. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to know your thoughts from your years of experience. Where do you think the Edo State tension has risen from so high lately? Well, thank you for having me. The, what is playing out in those states 
is not entirely new in the Nigerian political landscape. Of late, uh, we have uh, seen and we have had political actors, political party engaging themselves in untoward conduct, inappropriate comments, and then actual attacks on themselves and the, on the electors. So it's not new in the United States. It happened elsewhere. My worry is that because not many people that I know were brought to book for the inappropriate things they did in the previous elections. So the tendency to assume that there is immunity for impunity is there. And after though we are having on those states, yeah. which is a contiguous state. So if we are not careful, we'll repeat in, a, in on those states what is happening in a, 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 a those states right now. It is, uh, it is very shameful that adults are giving very wrong examples to children. They don't guard their statements. They are talking about throwing fire for fire by using uh, third degree me measures, using physical com combat, using having recourse to arms just to win elections. I think the political class should be ashamed of themselves and they should leave the way. Would you say it is too late to calm things down as it stands? It is never too late because we have got the science right now. What I think we should do, Nigerians should do as a whole, is for the leaders of the political parties to call themselves to order. Let the inter-party inter agencies hold a jaw to a jaw jaw. Talk to them to mellow, mellow the tempo of their speeches. And let us begin to call on the youth not to get themselves involved. Some of these political actors are being deceived for too long and are taking away part of the, the privileges of the youth and are trying to kill them, to remove them from the scene so as to perpetuate themselves. I think the youth should be circumspect in what they're doing and the law enforcement agencies should increase the tempo in getting people and bringing them to book. All right. Um, earlier, Mr. Festus Okoye talked about documenting threats and, um, of course, all the things that happened in the process, you know, building up to the election. And he also said that those things, uh, those uh, in bits of information were going to be given to handed over to security agencies to take action. I am, I, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ojuku now, what punitive measures are available or even possible against candidates that stoke election that eventually leads to violence? Well, the Electoral Act is clear on so many electoral offenses and the penalties that may attend to them. It lies with INEC as the umpire of elections to work in concert with the security agencies to document this and get the perpetrators to account for their misconduct. As it were, there are 14 parties that are contesting the post. But the, the major gladiators have been APC and PDP. We have had not just threats, we have seen the parties themselves exchanging verbal war. I've had a governor in Kano State and the governor of Rivers speaking against themselves and charging the people of Edo State, making Edo State a theater of war. That in itself is hate speech. But these two gentlemen, they have immunity. Let us wait that when they, if the calm comes to the calm, they must be held to account for inciting disturbance. All right, back to uh, Festo Zokoye now. INEC over the years has been asking for prosecutorial powers. Is it time? that we added to the electoral law? 
you know, what, what, what the commission has been asking for is the setting up of an electoral offenses commission and tribunal yeah. uh, to be charged exclusively with the responsibility of making arrests, uh, carrying out investigation, and carrying out prosecution, as well as also documenting uh, issues that uh, have a bearing on the electoral process. Uh, as of today, the commission has prosecutorial, prosecutorial powers, but we do not have the power to arrest because we don't have a police force. We don't have the power and we are without to investigate because we don't have uh, the power to investigate um, a criminal and electoral offenses. We only have the powers to prosecute. And we are saying that if you add the powers of prosecuting electoral offenders uh, to our powers uh, given to us under the constitution to organize, undertake, and supervise elections, that it, it's, we don't have the capacity, we don't have the financial uh, muscle, and also we don't have the expertise uh, to carry out um, um, uh, this particular responsibility. So we have advocated, we've gone to the National Assembly, uh, we have uh, pleaded with them uh, to make sure that we have an Electoral Offenses Commission stroke tribunal uh, to take care of this gamut of uh, issues, and that that is the only way we can break the cycle of impunity that attends our elections. Uh, people believe that they can do anything and get away with it. And when people believe that they can uh, commit murder, commit electoral offenses, and commit other, other crimes against the laws of the country and get away with it, they are definitely going to continue. So we need to break the cycle of impunity Is it by having an electoral offenses commission and tribunal yeah, uh, to it, deal with these issues. Yeah, just before we go back to uh, Mr. Emmanuel Lujuka, I want you all to also speak on this. Do you think it's also time that we... Um, consider disqualification of a candidate um, because of situations like this. If a candidate continues to stoke tension that leads or is possibly leading to violence, is it time that INEX seeks the powers to disqualify such a candidate? Uh, the, 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 the challenge here would be the exercise of uh, discretionary power. And uh, when you have to make uh, that type of determination, it is a huge determination that you have to make. And I think that uh, such a determination uh, should be left to the judiciary uh, so that uh, before that type of determination can be made, all the evidence available uh, has to be put on the table. Uh, but to give such a power to the Independent National Electoral Commission, it may lead to arbitrariness and it may lead to abuse of discretionary powers. But if you look at Section 94, Subsection 1 uh, of the Electoral Act, yeah. it, it, it gives the Commission of Police of each state of the Federation and that of the Federal Capital Territory the power and the responsibility to provide security for political rallies and political campaigns. So to that particular extent, the security agencies are available at these political rallies and these political campaigns. And then section, uh, um, uh, and, and anybody who uses intemperate language or anybody that uses language that is meant to incite uh, violence at political rallies and political campaigns has committed a criminal offense. And the punishment are uh, set out in sections 94 uh, to 96 of the Electoral Act. Uh, so I think that, um, the commission in conjunction uh, uh, under the auspices of the interagency consultative committee on election security we impress it on the various uh, commissioners of police uh, to carry out their constitutional and statutory responsibilities of bringing to book those who break the law uh, because people right. cannot break the law and then uh, just get away with it just because they're highly placed um, back to Mr. Emmanuel Ojuku now. Um, over the years, uh, you have seen the negative effects of do-or-die politics in Nigeria. You've also seen um, the negative effects of young Nigerians being deceived into thuggery and ballot box snatching and, and whatnot. Um, how do you think we can you know, change or stop the idea of do-or-die politics um, and what would be your recommendations to the young people in Edo State, the youth in Edo State today? Yes, do or, do or die. Some people do, some people die. The politicians do, the people, the electorate, they die. The people they use die. And because the people they, do, they use die, and because they are voiceless, because they are poor, they die on song. They never get justice. They've been abused, used, and discarded. It is those who do, who activate electoral violence that should be held to account. 
But the governments over the years have never summoned sufficient political will and sagacity to try members of their own who got involved in stoking violence before election, during election, and after election. None of them has ever been charged for electoral offenses. The idea of bringing electoral offenses commission, I think it's a waste of money, it's a waste of time. We have enough laws, we have enough capacity within the law enforcement and prosecution to prosecute them. Yeah. But the political will has been lacking. Because if the man who is doing the violence is a member of the ruling class, the government covers him. That is the truth. So they do the violence and Nigerians die and nobody says anything. It okay. is a shame. All right. Um, Professor Sokoye, INEC National Commission and, in, um, of course, the Information and Voter Education Committee Chairman. Thank you so much for your time this evening. And also, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ojuko, former police commissioner, thank you also for sharing with us. Thank you for having me. We wish you well. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, I'll be giving my take. When Nigerians hear about reducing cost of governance, their minds most times rush towards the high salaries and allowances of uh, National Assembly members. We banter for days about how unfair it is that these people earn so much, and yet a university professor will in his 30-year career not maybe make up to 10% of what a senator earns in a simple four-year tenure. But that makes us forget the bigger picture. Yes, it is good that we ask for a reduction in the National Assembly expenses, but let me help remind us all that Nigeria's high cost of governance goes far beyond the National Assembly. It is, for me, like a cancer that has eaten deep into every cell of our being as a nation, from the federal to the state to the local government areas. It seems likely from the mentality that it's, after all, government money. And Nigeria also is too rich. Oil money can never finish. And that's why we have 20 car convoys attached to a single governor. That's why our budget is padded every year. Buy new computers, buy new kitchen equipment, buy new newspapers every year. And that is why government officials traveled with such large entourages to different countries on the state's bill. Well, thanks to COVID, that has reduced drastically this year. Also, that is why even local government chairmen have PAs and PAs of SSAs of PAs, all paid with state funds. That's why we appoint commissioners for happiness and commissioners for keke riders, and we build statues. It is all part of the insanity of using government funds recklessly. We have to first of all kill that mentality that government funds are made available to, to be used without remorse, that government funds are never ending, and it is there to be spent and stolen. Government is and has never been about the personal enrichment of Nigerian citizens. It is about service. And Nigeria would never be able to sustain its own expenditure until we learn to have a conscience with how we spend. Our nation is bleeding, and we must plug all these leakages to keep this nation afloat. That's all for today. Plus Politics returns on Monday at 7 p.m. with even more interesting conversations. Remember to stay safe. Have a good evening.